Yeah. I pull up roto window down it. I pull up roto window down it. Yeah. I pull up roto window down it. Hotties, kettles, tea stirs. You're here for hot tea. All commentary is alleged, and in my opinion, this is for entertainment purposes only. So, no, I'm not done with Kimmy and Maurice's ass, which is why that last video was pretty much a cliffhanger. And for the hoes that's going to pose the dumbest questions in the comment section, I'm creating these videos one, because I get paid, two, because people are interested in this series, and three, Kimmy and Maurice came on this show and completely deceived us. It was only until a couple of seasons where I really realized how manipulative these two actually were. So I am taking the time, okay, wasting my time to go back and do a deep dive on these two to uncover some of the things that I missed and maybe some of you guys missed as well. So let's get into it. Of course, none of the things that we uncover within this series is going to affect their relationship because Kimmy knew exactly what she was getting into. Part of my talking about this is merely for my own sanity because I'm a psychopath. When things don't make sense to me, I have to deep dive into it to uncover the truth. So with that being said, follow along with me this series as we uncover and unpack a few things that we may or may not have missed when it comes to these two. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the post notification bell so you guys are up to date each and every time that I upload. Let me give you guys a disclaimer. Tomorrow, we're going to be getting to the real nitty gritty and putting the timeline together like I've been telling you guys we are going to be doing. But today, as I was putting the timeline together in the other video that you guys are going to be seeing tomorrow... I was watching these two clips and I just had to create a separate video with these two clips so we can break it down and talk about it so the next video won't be too long with me trying to dissect those two clips because once we watch them we're going to see that it's clear as day and evident who Kimmy really is to Maurice and once we dissect the video tomorrow we're going to see just how their relationship actually came about. Kimmy said that God sent this man to her and I think God sent Kimmy to him. Maurice was a bum, okay? Not only was he a bum, but he a nasty ass bum. He needs help, serious help. Ever since Angry Balls and That Is Maurice came out and did that interview with Carlos and said that Kimmy, he expect Kimmy to turn around and just take it. I've been telling you guys that he's a dangerous man and he's a man that has no self-control. I've said plenty of times a man with no self-control is a man that cannot be trusted at all and I've also said multiple times that Kimmy remind me of Shirley Strawberry these are women that protect their men in their nasty affairs they cover up for them because they're male identified male identified women think it's their job to protect grown-ass men that don't protect them oh we I cannot wait for this video tomorrow because as I talk things are gonna make sense more in that video than in this video but I just want to take y'all down memory lane because this is the ultimate reason why I don't like Kimmy. Kimmy was always suspect to me but I've always told you guys that I felt like Kimmy was a side chick because I am a person that comes from a married woman who too came from a married woman who had been surrounded by married women and there are certain tones and undertones with Kimmy that are unfamiliar to me. And I believe to a lot of y'all, there are certain things that Kimmy say that doesn't resonate with me. A married woman that comes from a married woman that had been surrounded by married women her whole life. And I do need y'all to understand being married is not a damn 
character trait of yours, okay? Don't make that your damn personality. Don't nobody give a damn that you marry. A lot of the times, the women that hold being married up as like some type of trophy has literally the shittiest union ever. Like, I'm gonna need y'all hoes to understand that single women live longer. Like, I love my husband to death, but we all know, okay? Him being married is more of a benefit to him than I. And I believe that across the board with any woman. Marriage is more beneficial to men than women. But hey, do what you want with that info. This is why I'm team take no shit. This is why I'm team a man should cater and worship you, not the other way around. So let's jump into this first clip because ultimately this is the reason why and how I know for a fact Kimmy was a side chick. How y'all been? Good. Now, I mean, right now, she's like the happiest she's been in a long time. You know what I'm talking about? Well, that's good. So I am a mannerisms person. I'm a body language person. I pay attention to energy. I read behaviors really well. So far, my intuition has never been wrong. Maybe it's me, but when he said Mel is the happiest that she's ever been, which we know was a lie. It seems to me she wasn't as happy as she was when she first found out that he was coming over. It's almost like she had this grin expecting to hear something other than what she heard. But y'all can let me know. How y'all been? Good. Now, I mean, right now, she's like the happiest she's been in a long time. You know what I'm talking about? Well, that's good. So that, that's effort that I'm putting in, that she's putting well, in. Why she's well. the happiest seems like she's the unhappiest. This, it was this right here. Even if she didn't like male, no real wife, no real woman would dare ask the man, the husband, what about the side chick? That is like insane to me. It's unfathomable. Kimmy is evil to me. When you sit down and you hear a man talk about his wife being the happiest she's ever been since the scandal came out. This is a woman that brought you onto this network. The reason why you get a damn check from Own and Carlos till this day. You then turn around and say, well, what about Arion? That's not fair. How the fuck is it not fair, ho? And this is why I had to make this video because watching these old clips struck so much emotion out of me because she continues to play as if she's this kind, caring person when she's a nasty, evil, mean-spirited person. Not only that, at the end of this clip, you're gonna hear her continue to say that he's such a good guy. He's such a good guy. Kimmy was always evil and always a hater of Mel. And the fact that Kimmy had gone through her cancel ba battle and Maurice treated her the way that he did and then she got on the internet and blamed us for feeling sorry for the way that he chose to explain his relationship with her, she's a side hoe. But we're going to talk about this because he doesn't even see her as a human. I have a clip for that. Just wait. That, that's effort that I'm putting in that she's putting well, in. Why she's the happiest... Seems like she's the unhappiest. She's a side chick. Don't, don't, don't even say her name. She's, she's I'm not going to call her a side chick. And I need y'all to understand this whole act, this woman's husband, why is his wife the happiest and his side chick isn't? That's what this hoe just sat on national television and asked. That's what this whole just sat on national television and asked, y'all. She never wanted the best for Mel, which is why God allowed Mel to choose how she dealt with her when this woman was on her downfall. Understand that, y'all. Mel still had a kind enough heart to try to be kind and caring to this woman. Called her beautiful every time she seen this woman. And this hoe asked her husband when she was pregnant with Sugar Mama, why isn't his wife or why is his wife only happy and not his side chick? One thing about it, one thing about your spirit, God will allow the people that you are putting that energy out toward to see you at your lowest. That's all I'm going to say. And I don't wish bad on her. I'm just saying, as we get to see things transpire over time, this is why I feel like she always was a nasty, evil person. Just because the irony and Mel being so kind and caring to her as she was going through her cancel battle when she was doing shit like this, checking on his side chick, bringing Mark, the cousin that was harassing her mom onto the show. Look at how God just naturally was 
blessing Mel. And Mel still didn't take that as a green card to be spiteful and nasty to her. We don't have to talk about it, <laughs> but I'm just saying it's unfortunate that so many different people are like collateral damage. I don't feel like at this what about his kids, ho? You talking about Slarion being collateral damage. What about his kids, ho? What about the woman that's the reason why you get to make a check every day? What about them? They're the real collateral damage. But this hoe really sitting up here talking about Slarion is collateral damage. I'm sure, oh, that's what she deserves. Because Mel don't deserve it. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah, right. To be hurt and sad and embarrassed or any of yes, that. Yes. So nobody deserves it as a human. He was the side chick, I'm telling you. She's saying that nobody deserves it as a human. She's more empathetic with the side bitch than the wife because she was on the other side. Except for, I, I take, except for me, you know, I, I think I put everybody through this by trying to be greedy and things of that nature. You know what I'm talking about? You don't sound like you're placing blame. This is the last time I'm going to pause with this clip and I'm going to let it play all the way through. But you guys will be able to see the whole clip in the video tomorrow. But this is why I say she's evil. Here's him trying to hold himself accountable. And this hoe is so male identified. She is willing to let him know, well, no, no, no. You're doing the right thing. You're just a nice guy. You own what happened. Oh, yeah. You say, I'm sorry, it's time to move on. In my opinion... You're just a nice guy, Martel. Yeah. Maybe too nice. Maybe that's what got you in trouble. I'm, I'm gonna take it. Um, you know, Mel and I, we talked about that. And that's what she said. My heart what really kept me in that mess. You good, right? Yeah. I typically say Martel has a big heart. And he does. I think that's what causes him a lot of his angst in severing certain relationships or ending, you know, different situations. And he thinks with his heart instead of kind of sometimes you gotta get things figured out with your head. Like he's a super sweet guy. Um, so you back up in a corner. But he's super sweet. Rolled him a little bit on Facebook and got to know him. He was so handsome and delicious. And I just like to look at him. Um, so I asked him to come and cut my son's hair because they told me he cut hair. So then he came over um, in the little red Corvette. <laughs> and um, from there, we just kind of were banter. You know, mm -hmm. how you doing, that kind of thing. It probably took a while before he asked me to go. She basically saying that it took him a while to before he asked her to go somewhere. But she posted him on her story December 2010. I need y'all to remember that because tomorrow some shit just not going to make sense. And like she said, she stalked him on his Facebook page. I think when she was stalking him on his Facebook page, she knew that he was married. I think at some point she found out that he was married. And I'm going to tell y'all that tomorrow. I do believe he was telling Kaiwa that they would be working on reconciling their marriage while he was also messing with Kimmy. I also believe that Kimmy knew that him and her were pr him and and Kaiwa was probably going through a divorce, but she was throwing her cootie cat at him in a in a means to distract him because she wanted him that bad. Granted, it's Maurice's fault, but Kimmy played a big role into this. Kaiwa was under the impression that they were reconciling. But here's why I believe that she was throwing her cootie cat at him to distract him because that is all he see with her. Oh, she's got a different level of sex drive. Then you, you, have, you also have a different level of active responsibility, which cuts back on her availability to be present with you. Now, the other thing, too, is the more you do with her, mm -hmm. the more you embrace her as a person and not just a partner to have sex with. I really need y'all to hear this and I'm going to replay it for y'all again after I'm done speaking. But why the hell do you need somebody to tell you to do stuff with your wife so you can see her as more of a human than just a sexual partner? And watch how he doesn't read into this. Kimmy is a fucking idiot. The more you do with her, mm -hmm. the more you embrace her as a person and not just a partner to have sex with. Is that it? Did he hit the nail on the head with that one? What? The more that I embrace you as a person and not a sexual partner, the more that I'll get sex. No, that's not what I said. Oh. Y'all, yeah, he interpreted that as the more he do stuff with her as a sexual partner, the more sex he gets. I don't care what nobody tell me. You cannot tell me Kimmy is not a dumb, desperate fool. She opened her legs for him in an attempt to get him 
in the most desperate way she could. She invested as much time as she did into him, finally got him. And so she's going to drain herself out trying to keep him. She has nothing to prove to herself and everything to prove to us. No, no, no that's not what I said. It's not the more you get said. It's the more you embrace her as a person. It's as how a it makes person. me feel. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. emotionally for women. Yeah. Translate into getting what you want. Yeah. Here she go with her stupid ass baby voice. And I actually want to read more into that because she speaks to him and she gives him that baby voice. And I wonder if she thinks that turns him on. And if she thinks that sweet, soft baby voice turns him on, what does she think are the effects of that? Okay. Because... There's a reason why she keeps speaking to him like that. Listen, sweetheart. Bye, babe. I'm going to get better. So you're, you're telling her that with a deep sense of sincerity, though, right? A hundred percent. Did you catch that? That's sincerity? Um, I feel like even when we have premarital counseling, we've had these conversations before. It sounds wonderful. Yeah. And then it just doesn't quite happen. This is who he was before she was battling the cancer. I knew he wasn't shit. Her dumb ass trying to convince us that he's the best thing that ever happened to her. He done stepped up. And she ultimately is the one that has to suffer in silence. And I'm just here to watch and dissect it all. Sex as an act of sharing the self with each other. Mm -hmm. Not just giving somebody something. But it is the sharing of the self. It should be more of like a, a bonding experience. Ultimately, I shouldn't look at sex as, as a means to an end or whatever. He's not attracted to you, love. You mean to tell me a therapist have to tell your man to bond with you? It's one thing to tell him to stop working so much, but he's having a conversation with the therapist about bonding with you so he can see you as a human rather than a sexual partner. Mind you, fast forward, he just sat down in an interview with Carlos King and said he expected this hoe to turn around. See, I didn't. I was going to call her a broad. I didn't want to call her a hoe, but it came out ho i was gonna that's why it came out like that but she but then say he expect this hoe to turn around and take it while she's battling a life-threatening disease like kimmy is 55 dumb years old <laughs> and i'm saying 55 dumb years old because 55 of them years was what we got to show for her because she ain't giving us intellect all right she don't waste 55 years of her goddamn life because baby what did you learn love Sex as an act of sharing the self with each other mm -hmm. not just giving somebody something but it is the sharing of the self it should be more of like a, a bonding experience. Ultimately, I shouldn't look at sex as as a means to an end or whatever, right? I gotta look at it more holistically as you as a person. Sex is never just about the happy ending, right? Or the climax, or I'm ready to go to sleep afterwards. It's never just about that. There's also that you can do it again. <laughs> okay, now it's about the connection and the bond. It's really about the connection and the bond. <laughs> It's really about the connection and the bond. Thank you. One, one last question. Yeah. Can we can we also compartmentalize it? Like sometimes we want to have the bond, and other times we just want to use it as exercise, right? If we want to burn off a couple of calories. <laughs> <laughs> she deserved this. She waited seven years to get married to this. <laughs> seven years to get married to a man that won't even correct people that's walking around calling you a side chick. Like he won't even correct his friends. He literally laughed at his friends. I'm talking about you waited seven years to marry a man that won't even wait on you to get done battling a life-threatening disease sweetie you waited seven years at your big grown age y'all get in the comments let me know what you think don't forget to like subscribe comment hit the post notification bell so you guys are up to date each and every time that i upload kimmy i'd like to give you the opportunity to respond to a headline a sad case of a man loving marriage huntsville fans slam maurice for demanding intimacy while kimmy goes through chemotherapy kimmy what is your response to the backlash that maurice has been getting lately so here's the thing, like originally, I didn't even watch it. He told me he had an interview with Carlos, and usually I just kind of get the nuts and bolts of it. You know, he was like, well, we did this. He asked me about that, and that, and I didn't do anything. Um, but then when I finally saw stuff just kind of everywhere, I was like, oh, my gosh, what did you say? I literally was like, what did you say? Um, and so one of the comments somebody keeps screenshotting around is the fact that I said, let me go see the interview. And people were like, I don't believe she hasn't seen it. And I just got life. Like, we got stuff. So when I actually did see it, I told them, I said, that was disrespectful. Like, the words that you chose were cruel to me. It wasn't protecting me. 
the irony of the conversation in itself was that if you actually watch the show, I'm the one who initiated the conversation in regards to the fact that the chemo has affected my libido. Um, and I know that affects him and his sexual injuries. So he has never forced me to do one single thing. He has never made me. He has never implied he was going to leave me. So the headlines, in order to get likes and tags, I absolutely get it. But the words that he chose to use throughout that interview, I felt were a bad choice of words in regards to me because it didn't protect me in the words that he chose to use to describe. Like, I think he said, bend over and take it. That's like ridiculous. Like, that's ridiculous. And I told him, I said, that was just, that was awful. The wording choice was awful. You know, I, I want to jump in and say something real quick. I, I was horrified too with some of the language. And um, I was spoke about having a situation where it was the reverse. I had a man that had some issues. I want to ask both of you, Kimmy, I want to ask you first, do you feel the pressure? Like if I don't satisfy my man, even when I don't feel good, am I nervous? Am I, do I feel a way about the future of my marriage? And Maurice, if you could take back what you said, would you rephrase it or do you stand on exactly what you said? So for me, like I said, we filmed it and everything. For Kimmy, I never felt like he was going to leave me. That wasn't the case whatsoever. Mm -hmm. However, even before our chemo issue came up, we already had conversation about our sex life. We talked about our sex life before we got married. So this is like an honest statement. In Kimmy's world, I had made up in my head seven days was the limit. Like, I would never make my husband go more than seven days. I don't care if we're angry. I don't care what's going on. That was always Kimmy's rule in her head. And so in this case, we went about two weeks, and I was like, ugh. So it was my choice because I know that that's fulfilling for both of us. It's fulfilling for both of us. Like at the end of the day, he's not the only one missing out. I'm missing out because I don't have the same climax. I don't have the same um, arousal. You know what I'm saying? So I never had that conversation based on the fact that I thought he was going to leave. I know I love my husband and that that is a big part of our world. Um, I don't physically hurt. It doesn't hurt me to have sex. It doesn't do that whatsoever. It was just the arousal of the moment and the climax that is very different for me. So I'm just not getting the same fulfillment out of the sexual activity that he was. We got it. So let's get Maurice in here. Maurice, do you think it was selfish for you to force your wife to suffer through it while she was fighting for her life? Your words. Your words. Now, those are my words. And I'm going to own the words that I say. However, you have to take everything into full context. I didn't have knowledge of her suffering. I didn't have knowledge of her rolling over and giving it to me when she didn't want to, right? Or didn't feel the need to. At the end of the day, this is the thing. She surprised the hell out of me on television. Talking about, you know what? I'm not getting it. I'm faking it. <laughs> All that stuff, like, listen, this is on national TV. So I'm like, oh, really? So you're faking it. This whole time, I'm thinking that you're doing it. And it, it puts everything into context when you watch the television show and then you actually see the interview. Because for me to find out that she's faking it, and then for me to analyze the situation and say, it's admirable for her to do this because number one, most people that do things for you let you know that they're doing it for you. They don't let you find out later on, oh wow, you were actually hurting or you were going through something and you were sharing that and you were doing it for me. So of course I would change my words and give better context in any type of interview. However, I still think that you don't think you do it. You don't think it was a little cringy to even want to have sex with her while she was going through that? And I ask that because typically if somebody's not feeling well, we don't make them cook. We don't make them wash the dishes. We may not make them take the, the kids to school. And all of those things are oftentimes considered a wife's duty. You didn't think it would be all right for her to forego that one duty while she was going through this? See, this is the thing. We weren't doing it on the day she went through and did it. Unless, unless I didn't know that either. Interesting, interesting. So can you ask, I asked you earlier, would you ref rephrase anything that you said? Because it seemed you, your wife just revealed that it was your words, right? You know, you said things, bend over and take it. If you, I, I've done this many times. I've said stuff and it's like, I wish I would said it like this. Would you rephrase anything? Would you do, would you, would you do over? Or are you like, no, I, I meant it exactly. Anytime my wife feels like she's not protected by whatever I do, that's my job. Mm -hmm. That's why God gave her to me, is to make sure that I have a covering and protection over her at all times. And if she feels like my words are crass, then I'll change my words. Um, I'm not one of those people that say, man, I said what I said. I, now, mind you, that's a great quote and everything else that goes around social media. I said what I said. I don't even know where that came from. But candy. I'm not one of those people. It came from candy, candy on the Housewives of Atlanta. She said it on one of the 
Uh, but I'm not gonna. I said what I said. I said what I said. Hold on. Let me say it better the next time. So I, I and I know y'all probably been through this, and we know Martel and, and Melody have gone through this. The fans have been voicing their opinion about Maurice's remarks, and many of them that many of them are saying, you know, Kimmy should leave the relationship. Obviously, you're not going nowhere. But has all this scatterbutt from the fans affected you guys' relationship in any way? Mm, I actually really don't care what people say that that they love me. Like they love me one day, they hate me the next. Mm -hmm. You know, I really care what Kimmy says. If Kimmy says it offends her, guess what? I'll be changing. If Miles are there that offends him, Jalen, any of the kids, guess what? I'll change. But I think that's it's a moment in terms of being on, you know, television that we have to take a lot of comments, whether we agree, don't agree. I need to take most of them with a grain of salt most of the time. However, I think I, you know, some of my fans to me just go overboard, like really for real. But in general, I felt like a lot of them were warranted that the communication, it was crass. I mean, it was crass and, you know, non-protecting, disrespectful. Um, a lot of those comments were on point. And, and I, yeah. I, I got to well, say this as a woman here, and I'm sorry, I know you have no chance to say anything. I still haven't heard him rephrase it in a kinder way right here on the show. I've been trying to give you the opportunity because I feel like your wife is protecting you more than you're protecting her. I feel like she's protecting your rep. And I'm like... I, I, Kimmy, I, I should have said it like this. I'm sorry. And it's like, I feel so bad. For, like, I can't imagine going through what she's going through. You saying that and then me asking you twice if you would rephrase it. And you said, yeah, but you really haven't. It. it seemed like it's more about you than her still. In my opinion, uh, it's just my yeah. opinion. And you can tell me shut the fuck up if you want to. <laughs> it's my opinion, you know? Let me, I understand where you're coming from. And, and what I said is you got to get it in the context. I'm not going to rephrase. You said, what if I rephrase it? Yes, I would rephrase it. But at the end of the day, what is our, we're talking about this because I've already said something, right? There's no taking it back. There's, there's no ringing that bell. That bell's rung. That's why we're here. At the end of the, in the future, what I will do is I'll make sure that my wife feels protected. I don't feel any different about the situation. At the end of the day, my wife did something that most people won't do. Simply, she put her personal feelings aside. I never wanted her to do anything that, that was uncomfortable. I wanted her to stop working. I wanted her to put everything oh, to the side and let's get better. So when she's doing things to find a sense of normalcy in life, guess what? I don't know because I'm not inside of her what makes her feel good, what doesn't make her feel good, when she's feeling good, when she's not. So at the end of the day, you know what? Maurice, I, I feel that. <laughs> you can put up with this thing on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I pull up Roto Winner, County. I pull up Roto Winner, Johnny. Yeah. yeah, I pull up Roto Winner, Johnny.